form or looks different or feels different. It's in a different mindset. So anybody that doesn't fit anywhere, that would have included Jehovah's Witnesses. If he was a gypsy, uh, he was an asocial. I have um, uh, pictures of my grandmother and, uh, and, and some people that I brought along. I even brought a picture of um, Albert Einstein. Uh, I couldn't get permission to use that picture. And, um, but I think that had Mr. Einstein been there, uh, he would have not fit into the right category of, of something. And so it is just horrible how this all happened. And um, brilliant people, wonderful people, um, were just put to death because they didn't fit the norm of the government at that time. And that's what's so sad about the whole thing. Um, I had a friend, well, I had an acquaintance. Her name was Manya Davidson. And she had an autograph, a uh, photograph of Albert Einstein. And when she passed, we wasn't able to get it. And um, I, I really wanted to share that with you to show you what what brilliance um, there is in people that's a little different. And I'm not talking about ethnically or racially. Uh, some, some of us and some of my friends, we don't. Uh, we dance to the drum, to the beat of a different drum. Had we lived at that time, we would have all ended up in one of those places. Now, when I was a little girl, when I was a little girl, <coughs> Um, the people I lived with at the time, they actually took me to an underground facility. And that's why I remember the ovens and, and I've touched these things uh, when I was little. And uh, it brought back a lot of memories for me. And those things are real. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit. We all agree this was horrible things and we needed to learn from this. And why am I telling you this? Like I said, I am going to fast forward here for a minute. We all agree this was horrible things, and we needed to learn from this. And why am I telling you this? Like I said, I am going to fast forward here for a minute. <coughs> I ran into an article the other day uh, on the internet. Now keep in mind, some things are true on the internet, and some of them are not. This is an opinion here. It says, are activists being attacked with electronic weapons? And it reads, many of our friends who are more intuitive and active in trying to make the world a better place have been experiencing nearly identical symptoms of unexplained origin. These symptoms include headaches, stomach swelling and pain, night sweats, time abnormality, trouble concentrating, all with no apparent physical cause. Some have to. Oh, excuse me, some have had extensive medical checkups, which found no cause. One of our friends awoke from a deep sleep on several occasions to a strange vibration inside of the body. In most cases, the people around the friends were also affected. Now, we're going to give you some possible causes for anything like that. It could be a virus. Usually, a virus uh, causes other symptoms, such as runny nose, fever, and, uh, but it wouldn't cause the vibrations or the time abnormalities, and it would infect others. If it was a bacteria, it can cause the same symptoms, but not the vibration and the time abnormalities, um, and they would increase the fever. If it came from food poisoning, it's likely that other people that ate the food would also be contaminated and get sick. Then genetic contamination, that would, uh, even though we know little about it, from, there would be illnesses from genetically engineered food, would have all symptoms, in, including um, that, that we included, but not the vibrations. And um, it says that transgenes implants into the food are known to jump to other species and cause a wide variety of ailments. But that still would not cause the time abnormalities. And then we have microwave weapons. They can cause all of the symptoms. Microwave symptoms can be detected use, 
using, uh, I mean, microwave weapons can be detected using a wide band of radio frequency, a detector or spectrum analyzer. And it will usually impact anyone who's in the path of the beam. That has not been the case with any of the people we know. And it cannot cause time abnormalities. And then we get to psychotronics. Now, those are some of the things that were tested in these places. Psychotronics is a remote en energetic manipulation of a being. A psychotronics weapon can target a specific person and cause virtually any symptoms. It operates from a distance and creates no trace, which can be measured by commonly available instruments. Psychotronic weapon have been under development since the days of Tesla. Present-day weaponries are more advanced than we can imagine. Cytronic weapons are the only potential cause for all the symptoms experienced by some of the friends. In the original show, we had removed all the sponsors, like I mentioned earlier. The reason for that was we wasn't sure if they would all agree on uh, the way we were looking at things at that time. We took a vote, uh, my staff and myself, to see who wanted to participate and he felt, who felt uncomfortable doing this. Needless to say, everybody was in agreement on my staff. Um, it was a different administration at that time. But make no mistake, sometimes things, uh, they seem to change, but they really don't. Now, the reason I picked this particular time to air this show is because there's so many things going on. At the time of this insert taping, two weeks ago, the election in Iran happened. And of course, we all uh, followed along with that and um, we cheered the people on and we thought it was terrible what people are doing. And, but it was them, you know, it, it was them. And uh, so what happened was, on one of my social sites, uh, tagged, one of the Egyptians that speaks no English, um, he had decided to, uh, I guess he wanted to send a message to all the Americans and, and all, um, all the other people on the side. They came from the Philippines, they came from, from Fiji and, and Gaza and uh, Germany and England, they're just from all over the place. And so, what he did is he sent the um, he sent the video We Are the World that Michael Jackson and the friends did at that time when they wanted in the eighties when they wanted to feed, feed I think it was Ethiopia or Africa at the time. Well, anyway, I was really moved that this gentleman was trying to figure out a way how to relate to us to the rest of the world that we were you know we were all rooting for peace and that's the only way we could do this. And um, I'll get back to that video in a minute. A anyway, it came and then I posted it. Let me leave it at that. The next day I received a video on one of my sites from a, a German, uh, from one of the German friends. And it, it was very graphic. Um, and it was dedicated to the young Iranian woman that got killed. Neda is her name. And I posted that. And... Um, what they had done, they had taken bits and pieces from Twitter that uh, everybody had put together and they turned it into like a, like, like a show to show people what really happened. It's very graphic. So the concentration camps was then and this is now. And uh, so I hooked, the, uh, I hooked the video to some of my sites and when people clicked on it, you had to fill out a paper for YouTube saying you was old enough to watch this because it was just too graphic. And But what it made me think about, and I wrote a newsletter about this, the ingenuity of the people to communicate with the people on the ground in Iran and other places when there is a problem and news blackout reminds me of the stories I heard about the concentration camps where they had nothing, absolutely nothing, and they had developed such an underground uh, network, uh, some kind of way, I don't know how they did it, but sometimes they would find relatives by word of mouth in a different part of the country. And um, 
And that's what makes me think of the air in Dachau here. In the meantime, Michael Jackson died, and then everybody thought they thought I had put the "We Are the World" on um, on the site because he died. But I pointed out the date, and I had posted it two days before this happened. So now he has all this ugliness with Michael Jackson, and we don't care. It doesn't matter. Um, I think as a human being, he was here to. Um, to show us things, to bridge things, to give us beautiful music, and uh, and we have to celebrate that. That here's this one person that at a time of crisis, at this time, um, he had some made some available to the world that we, we could we could use at this time. Um, Abu Ghraib, Guantanamo, and all these things. I know we said we're never going to do this again, but how do we know this? And, and now they said, that's all it takes. Oh, we're not going to do this again. And then we just stop talking about it. And uh, somebody needs to say something. You have these maniacs that if you do speak up, they want to go shoot somebody like the man at the abortion clinic and things. That's not what we want. We want to be in a good frame of mind, to be alert and heal the world, the world with positive thoughts, positive thoughts. And that's how we can make a whole lot of difference, not by violence and fighting. And uh, I'm sorry I took you in an ugly space today, but sometimes that's where we need to go. And so um, I think next week we're going to get happy again. But I really wanted to show that to you again. And if we think this is never going to happen again, th think again. We have to lay, lay the groundwork to show that the whole world can get along, and that's the only way. Uh, a tragedy like that will not appear again. It's not called Holocaust anymore. It is now called um, genocide. Uh, in the last couple of years, whole countries got pulverized, and we said, "Ah, oh, well," and we just went on. So, can we literally do something about it? Probably not. But we can give the earth energy and the people energy, and and with good thoughts and intentions, try to help long that our human behavior will change a little bit and that's what I'm hoping for and uh, see you next week Randy Shaw is singing us out we we'll see you next week bye bye we've had Thank you.